All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to verify whether a particular solution is an actual solution to the differential equation. So this is the differential equation. The reason it's a differential equation is because it's got the derivatives involved with it. Um, sometimes they'd be the first derivative here, they might be the second derivative, whatever you have. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our original function and we're going to find the derivative because we need y prime in the problem. So y prime is going to be negative e to negative x. Now if this is the truly nice real solution to this differential equation over here, when I plug it in, everything should make sense. So 3 and then y prime is negative e to the negative x plus 4 and y is e to the negative x and that should equal e to the negative x. Now this is not always true when you're verifying it I mean it may or may not be a true statement but well negative 3 plus 4 is 1 e to the negative x which does match with e to the negative x. It checks out. So this is a yes or no question. Yes this is a particular solution to this differential equation over here. That's the idea. Sometimes it's a little trickier to figure this out. So over here, you're trying to verify that this differential equation has this solution. So I got dy dx over here, so I better figure out what dy dx is over here. And in this case, you got to do the implicit differentiation. 2y dy dx. Or you can just use y prime. Minus 2. I'm going to go to dy prime just because it's faster to write. Now don't forget natural log. Everybody on the top, y prime over y equals 2x squared. Oh, 2x. Now you don't have to do dx, dx over here. You're doing the derivative of both sides in terms of x. The derivative of x in terms of x is 1. All right, if you've forgotten how to do this, we have to take, we're going to factor out our y prime. So y prime, and then you've got 2y minus 2 over y equals 2x. And at first glance, this doesn't really seem to be doing much for us because I mean, if I divide that over, it's not going to be really that. So one of the things you can do here is we're going to come do common denominator. So y prime, because we only have one factor over here. So this is going to be 2y squared minus 2 over y. So I'll multiply top and bottom by y here. Equal to 2x. Now, I hope you realize you can divide it 2 by everything. So if I divide the left side by 2 and the right side by 2, that's going to make these cancel out. Well, not the y. The y minus 1. I could have factored that out as well. So you can see that may be easier if you had taken the 2 out here in the first place. Does that make sense? So from there, they go away. And then we're just going to cross multiply. Multiply by the reciprocal more like y over y squared minus 1. Multiply that over there, and you've got it. You've got your dy dx equal to xy, y squared minus 1. Now, sometimes it's really tricky to see because over here, you really had to do a little bit of algebra to make it look like how you want it to look. And if the truth was that it didn't actually you know, solve the differential equation, then you get something like y squared minus 2, and you get stuck and be like, okay, is there any way of making it 1? And, well, no, it wouldn't be. So the answer would be no, this would not be a particular solution to this differential equation. But since it checks out, it is a particular solution to this particular differential equation. Now, the thing that's funny is it may not be the only solution. Differential equation generally modeled motion, modeled something that's changing, and it's changing dynamically with, both, with respect to both x and y. So there may be more than one answer to that question. But this answer does work. All right, so you can verify one given the initial condition. Um, you can do this either with the C in the problem, or you could take the C out of the problem. And sometimes it makes more sense to figure out what C is right away, and sometimes later on it's easier to figure out it without it. So if we want to find C right away, we know that Y is here, X is here, and we have this initial condition of negative 3, 2. So we plug in the 2 for the y equals c times negative 3 to the third. Now the problem with doing it this way is you're going to get your c to be 2 over 27. And then you're going to have to work with a 2 over 27 everywhere. Not the end of the world, but it's what you've got to do. So your y is going to equal 2 over 27. What you get left is c x cubed. We need a y prime. 
So y prime is going to be, well, drop down the 3, and the 27 is going to be 2 over 9x squared. And then we're going to plug that in for our y prime. So we have x, and then we have our 2 over 9x squared minus 3 times the y, which is here, 2 over 27x cubed. And this hopefully equals 0. So we have a 2 over 9x cubed minus, well, 3 goes into 27 9 times. 2 over 9x cubed equals 0. 0 does equal 0, so we have checked that. If you didn't put in the c value, if you just left it as c, then this would be, so here's my y, here's y prime, 3c, and then over here, once you have this, we have a 3c. And then c. Which you can kind of almost see just right away. So this is going to work for any c value. And then we have a particular initial condition which lets us find it. So if you work with it this way and got it to check out, then you can plug this in, but you would have to still find c at some point. So we really want to know well, I want to find even write this. So y equals our 2 over 27x cubed. That is the particular solution, and it works with this differential equation.